And welcome back to the show. The Brotherhood Sister Soul Organization provides comprehensive, holistic, and long-term support services to youth who range in the age from 8 to 22. Now, the organization is working to develop a new generation of environmental activists, teaching them about the natural world and the unlikely environment of New York City. Now, Brosis youth are deeply engaged in environmental activism and help to maintain a community garden in partnership with other local organizations. Joining us to share a little bit more about the work that goes on, I am joined by environmental program coordinator and alumnus at the Brotherhood Sister Soul, Nando Rodriguez. And Nando, glad to have you here on the Social Justice Forums. A pleasure to be here, Larry. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, I often tell people that environmental justice is actually social justice. And um, share with us a little bit about your work in the area of environmental justice. Well, right now we work with young people from the ages 8 to 22 in our program. And within that, we have environmental programs for all of the young people that participate in our program. And the idea is to get them um, uh, aware and also practicing environmental practices and sustainability within our community, but also sharing that with the community. So the idea is you're learning something of how to be more sustainable in the environment and then teaching it to your community so that you can pass on what you have learned in your home, in your neighborhood, to your neighbors, and then continuing to do stuff where the community can get involved with environmental uh, justice practices. Yeah. I was talking to somebody not too long ago, and we were talking about urban gardening. And, uh, you know, when you're from New York City, somebody thinks that's the last thing that really goes on. But the reality is there's a lot of places and spaces for uh, urban gardening and also farming. And I know that your organization uh, really taps into that component as well. Yeah, we like to use the phrase urban farmers because we are growing this produce, we are eating our produce. We like to um, say that we're not just gardening, you know, gardening could be just plants and best, you know, and, and, and beautification, but we're actually growing food. We have fruits and vegetables and herbs that are being used in our community. Um, so, you know, you know, farming, uh, urban farming for us is uh, a thing that's been going on in New York City for a long time. It's just you know, use the garden phase, which is okay, but we want to consider ourselves also as small farmers. Yeah. You know, I know you got youth in the program, and so you take these youth and you really introduce them into uh, farming and becoming urban farmers. And for a lot of them, uh, it's a first go round. Talk to us about uh, bringing them into the culture and what the reception has been like. Yeah, well, it's the different the, the different ages is where they kind of like you can see how much they want to be involved and how much they kind of like, ooh, that's icky, touchy, I don't want to touch that. <laughs> the little ones, they're like, you show them a bug, you show them a worm, you show them a roly poly, you get into the dirt. They want to run around, they want to do anything, they want to touch everything, you know, scream here and there, but let me touch it, let me touch it. That's the beauty part of it. Once they become teenagers and they haven't had that experience in their lives, that's when it becomes a little more complicated. That's where teenagers, we have to kind of like manipulate them to kind of, all right, you don't want to touch it, that's okay. Maybe someone else wants to touch it. When they start to see their fears, not being afraid of certain things that they've been afraid of all their lives, then they still begin to open up their wings or their imagination or their, you know, take away their fears of just getting their hands dirty. Um, and just being, being like, giving the, the, the experience for them to kind of like to take a plant, take the vegetable right off the plant and like eat it or smell it, you know, smelling a basil or smelling uh, uh, any type of uh, uh, aroma uh, herbs that we have, kind of opens up their fear, their horizon of like, wow, this is interesting. This is, this is creative. I want to get more into it. So it's, it's always those type of steps that we have to do with them. Yeah. And really, you know, when we talk about the Bronx and we talk about New York City, there are a lot of green spaces. you got, you know, several parks and things of that nature. But I know that for you also trying to help to create green spaces is a part of the work that you do. Give us a little bit about the work there and helping to create that green space. Yeah, I mean, creating green spaces has always been a dream of mine as a young person. Um, every time I see a vacant land or a vacant lot, I'm always thinking, you know, this could be a beautiful garden or this could just be a, a nice patch of grass for young people or people in the community can kind of just 
you know, have a little touch with nature. You know, the more we get disconnected with nature, the less we want to appreciate her, the less we take care of her. So the more green spaces in the city, the more green spaces around your neighborhood, around your, your, your upbringing, your life, the more you want to appreciate and take care of nature. So that we do it, we kind of, we kind of help out other gardens, we go around other gardens when they we feel like they need a little helping hand. Um, because a lot of gardeners, a lot of urban farmers, but it's said, um, always have a lack of, of support. I mean, people support. Sometimes we want to be that support for our community, uh, local farmers that we have here. Um, and then, you know, every time there's like a, a street, you know, turn it and you know, plant the you know, sweet, sweet, sweet trees, plant the sweet trees, take care of the sweet trees, clean them out. Um, and just to kind of continue to give our green, you know, our mother, our, our environment, a little bit of support and attention, love and appreciation. So having the young people be a part of that makes them feel proud of knowing what they're doing so they can do. to me to add more uh, green touch or green space to, uh, to our so. Yeah. So I know that you have some environmental projects that you're working on. Share with us uh, what your young people are working on presently today. So we uh, just installed a greenhouse and inside of the greenhouse with help with Uncle Farm, we uh, put in a aquaculture where we have reservoir. We have right now we have goldfish, just put the and put some tilapias in there. And then on top of it, we have, uh, uh, we're growing some plants, some kale, some you know, collard greens, some Swiss chard on running water. So there's no soil with this at all. It's inside of the greenhouse. And the greenhouse has four compost bins that I invented when I was a teenager with a group called Coco Grove. And we're just, you know, keeping the greenhouse warm in the winter. Right now, you know, it's hot outside, so the greenhouse is super hot. But I'm sure when the winter, when the winter comes and it's 30 degrees outside, we're going to be in 60, 70 degree weather inside of our greenhouse. Our plants will be growing all year long. And this is a project that we can have our young people be a part of, you know, growing and maintaining food for the whole year. So to give them a different perspective of what's the possibilities of being environmentally uh, skilled and, and sustainably skilled to creating different places where you can continue to grow food with your community. And this is kind of like a pilot that we want to show to our community that every garden and community can kind of do something like this. Like this idea of having an aquaculture can work in your basements you know, with the right light and the right heat, you can start growing food anywhere in all of these buildings that we have. So um, it's just one of the projects that we work on. The other ones are basically continuing to uh, install or, or maintain um, our green space, teaching young people how to propagate, how to uh, grow new fruits and vegetables, um, how to maintain it, how to, how to you know, uh, cook it. We have a culinary class that we work with young people so that they can cook um, and teach young people and teach the community different recipes, the food that they're growing. We have, different, you know, we have our program broken into three different, um, four different areas in the environmental program, which is food empowerment, where they focus on all the food, uh, nutritional uh, values of all the plants that we're growing, the cooking these values, recipes that we put into the community. We're also managing our youth market so that we bring in local grown produce from local farms and give access to local produce to our community, which our, which our farmers like. In collaboration, we brought in Fort Mendo Farm, has a CSA for our community, so there's about 100 people coming to our CSA and, and getting their produce, which is also locally grown. Um, our horticulture society, society is a um, core group. They focus on maintaining all the green spaces, all the green plants, all the uh, fruits and vegetables in our garden, but also producing more green uh, vegetation or planting or beautification into our street trees. Uh, and then the sustainable designs, we're the ones who go into the greenhouse, building the greenhouse, building the aquaculture, uh, working on the compost beds, working on um, waste management, recycling, and teaching young people how to recycle, what we can do with recycling, so creating beds out of milk crates, um, you know, things like that. So just to get the young people in a wide variety of different sustainable uh, projects, but also teaching them environmental justice within their practices. So we, I like to call it a little, a little ripple in the ocean of 
uh, possibilities. Yeah. How hard is the buy-in? Because think about this. Um, you know, we live in a generation right now where young people are kind of like addicted to fast pace and we're used to seeing things happen. 120 characters or less. We're living in this, you know, fast paced, hustling and bustling environment. But when you talk about planting and you talk about, you know, okay, we'll plant in the summer and we'll see things grow throughout the course of the winter. Um, how hard is that buy-in for young people to really be patient with a process such as this to be able to see it all the way through? Yeah, it's, it's one of the things I like to also say that it's one of the hardest um, programs I would imagine that young people can get involved when you start hearing gardening or environmental, like, ah, sciences, I'm not trying to do that. So we have to uh, tweak the name a little bit so that they don't know it's a part of that, but also plug in a lot of activity. So the buy-in is very difficult, but the way we do it is that we integrate a lot of youth um, activities and fun time, um, a little pizza, don't hurt, you know, won't hurt, a little food, free food for them. Uh, once they once they feel that the culture and the environment is actually an environment that they like to be a part of, keeping them here is not a problem. It's just getting them to start with us. So we got that hook, you know, that, that, that we want to get them to begin um, processing or at least practicing what we do is the hard part. But once they're here, it's, they, they never want to I have young, I have alumni that's always come back after college um, breaks to now like, hey, what are you doing? What, what can you be a part of? Where can I volunteer? So keeping them involved is not the problem. It's more getting that beginning start. The, the buy-in is, like I said, free food, uh, fun trips, um, showing them that, you know, you can, you can go to a farm upstate or you can go to a farm in Brooklyn or we can go to a farm in Queens. Just to let them know that the city is ours to explore and what I'm teaching you or what we want to explore with you is, you know, the environment, the environment that you live in that we have to take care of. And you are a pioneer, you are a warrior, you are a, you know, uh, uh, a guy of renaissance, superhero. So once they feel that they are part of a bigger picture to take care of our environment, they stay invested. They stay invested. Yeah. Yeah. You brought up Gaia Renaissance. I want to talk about that for a minute because that's something particularly associated with your young people. Yeah, so Gaia Renaissance is our leadership environment. So we had tiers to get into our environment. So we start off with Gaia Explorers. Um, let me go back. Gaia, the name Gaia, just for people who don't know, uh, we researched that it's, a, it's the name given to the planet Earth by Greek mythology. Uh, so when you give uh, uh, an object or a species or something a name, it becomes more special to you, more real. So when we have pets and we give our pets a name, that pet is not part of the family. You know? So the idea was if we give the planet Earth a name, which she is a living species, a living environment, then we can treasure the, the planet a little more different. Not just our planet is where we live, but more this is a living uh, ecosystem that we need to take care of. So that's why we use Gaia in a lot of our tiers of our program. So the beginning tier for little kids that come into our organizations, the eight year olds, the nine year olds, the 10 year olds, we do Gaia Explore. So we have a lot of hands on activity for them. Put your hands in some dirt, touch some worms, lick at some roly poly, eat a strawberry, eat a, 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 a peach, look at this leaf. Where, where does the leaf, who, what type of fruit is this leaf? And so, giving them a lot of hands on activity to explore. Then we go into Gaia Junior Guy, where Junior Guy is middle school age, where young people are now doing some projects, actually, you know, uh, nurturing some plants. Um, um, learning about you know soil quality, soil cycle, uh, learning about waste management, learning about how to cook and doing cook, uh, cooking demos, and then after that they get a summer job with us, uh, and then they go into Gaia Renaissance. In the Gaia Renaissance, and now, now you have explored, you have experience. Now we're going to work on on making your skills a lot stronger, a lot better, so that you can go out there and teach it as you're working and learning going through it. So Gaia and Renaissance are the ones that will go to other gardens and help out. We'll work on projects in our garden and uh, implement new projects or work on new projects or maintain our, our existing projects. We'll go to the farms of state. We'll go uh, 
um, to different places to go to conferences and these young people are the ones teaching or sharing what they have been working on, what they're learning. And this is kind of like a leadership core group. And then after that, once they graduate high school, we like to call them Gaia alumni or Gaia gurus, those that come back that want to be a part of this existence or go to school where people to, to expand their environment to science uh, 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 education and take environmental science courses and come, come back to want to be in a career of you know, green collar jobs. Yeah. Before we go, I know you have a summer internship program. It's about seven weeks long. But for people who really want to find out more information, get connected. Maybe they a parent is watching right now and saying, I want my young people connected. How do they get connected to you? Uh, we like to say just come by and stop by. We're on 143rd Street, Hamilton Place, in the uh, Upper West Side of Harlem. Um, that's one way. You can go on our website, www.brotherhoodsistersoul.org. Um, you can call us at 212-283-7044 and ask for information, ask for myself. Um, but we're, we're not shy of giving people tours, uh, talking to people in person. Um, I feel sometimes it's always better to be in person, so come on by, check us out. Yeah. I lived on 157 Riverside Drive. That's only a few minutes away, but I know Harlem is blessed to have you. Thank you so much, Nando, for being with us here. Thank you for having me, Darren. It's a pleasure to be here. All righty, listen, I want you to take a quick break. Uh, we we're going to take a quick break. I want you to stay with us, actually. We're going to continue with more on the social justice forums coming up right after this. <laughs> 